Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about JIT set and will set. These are the two observers in Swift that are used to observe uh, a change in value for any variable. I'm going to show you how to use these observers in real life projects. So for example, let's assume I'm creating an app and there's an in-app purchase in that app. I want to make a variable that will track that in-app purchase if the user has made a purchase or not. So let's uh, create a class called preference. I can call it preferences. And what I generally do is I make this preference instance available for to everyone. So we'll create a singleton instance. So static let shared is equal to preference. So this object will be shared throughout the life of the app. And now we will have a property called is purchased. That would be a Boolean. And this variable is purchased should live even after the life of the app. So that when user kills the app, this variable does not change or reset its value. So what we are going to do is we are going to get this variable from a user stand, user defaults. You can say user. Okay. So first we need to import foundation to use user defaults in playground. You'll say user defaults dot standard dot bool for key and then we can call our key as is purchased so this is our variable is purchased that is getting its value from this user defaults that's stored on the disk now one more thing we want is that if someone sets this value is purchased to be true this store this user default value should also change Currently, if someone tries to change its value, so let's say I print preferences dot share dot is purchased, it's false, and I can change this value to true and print again. So then we can see it has become true. But if we just kill the app, so in playground killing the app is just to come in these lines and it will start fresh. You can see that even if we change the variable to true in the previous session, this session has reset its value is purchased to false. But whenever we run the app freshly, is purchased value is assigned from this user defaults that is stored on the disk. And we never modified the storage. That's why it's always been false. So whenever like user made makes a purchase and we want to make um, assign this is purchased variable to true. What we want it to happen is like we want to change the user defaults value as well. So to do that, we will use our did set observer. So to use did set observer, what we do is this uh, after this variable declaration, you can open a curly braces. And here you can say did set and then open the curly braces. So this is our did set observer. And what we can do is we can set the user defaults. User default dot standard bool. So we can say set bool for key. And in the place in place of the bool, we can pass the actual value is purchased, and key is going to be the same is purchased. So whenever you change the value of is purchased, uh, did after the value is changed, Swift is going to call this did set observer. And we will just assign the new value that's stored in uh, is purchased to the user defaults so that the disk value is also updated. And if you want to access uh, the older value of is purchased inside the did set, because when did set is called, is purchased value is already changed. So if you want to access the old value, uh, what you can do is let's try to print something. And if you want to say, like, I want to use an old value. So what we can say is we can just say older value. So this is a special constant that this did set observer has that denotes the older value of the variable. So now let's see what happens if we change our perf uh, our is purchase variable to true. So to do that, let's just uncomment these two lines. And as you can see, it was false before. And after running this statement, it has the old value was false, but it has become become true. So that is working. Now let me comment this line again. Now as you can see that this is still prints true. It did not reset the value of is purchased to false. 
because now the value is stored in the user defaults that's on the disk. So even if the app restarts or user kills the app and launches the, your app again, the value is going to be true unless you change it. So let's change it back. Now we have changed it again from true to false. Now let's try to make a Swift UI view. We'll say it's struct content view. That would be a view. And for boy, let's import the Swift UI first so you can get some completion. And in the body, we will just have a text view. And uh, that will say purchased. So what we want is we want to uh, display either purchased or not purchased depending upon this variable is purchased. So to do that, we will have the preference as our observed object and we'll call it preference. Preferences equals to preferences. And we can have the shared instance. And then to do that, we have to adhere to the observable object in the class as denoted by the X code. And let's preview this. So, so to preview, uh, what we need is we need playground support. And then we need to say playground page dot current dot set live view. And we will pass our content view. As you can see, we are displaying purchased because that's the only thing that's here. But what we are going to do is we're going to say preferences dot is purchased. If that's true, display purchased. And if that's not true, display not purchased. Now, as you can see, we are displaying not purchased. So user hasn't purchased this item yet. But now we can say on tap gesture and then we can say preferences dot is purchased equals to true. I mean, you will have your own logic, but I, for simplicity, I just have this tab gesture that will toggle the each purchase variable from to true. Now, if you try to toggle uh, is purchased by clicking on this not purchased, you can see nothing happens. The not purchased is not changed to the purchased. So it's still showing not purchased. That's because uh, we haven't made this variable is purchased published. So to, to let Swift UI know that this Whenever this each purchased variable on the observable object is changed, I need to refresh my view. You have to then uh, you have to append this the add published uh, tag before the variable so that Swift UI can refresh any views that needs updating. As you can see now, it's changed. So let's try to do a toggle so we can show it better. So now, if we click on it, you can see now it's toggling between purchased and not purchased. Okay, so this is how you use Jetset Observer to create a property that is stored on the disk and it remains the same even if user kills your app. So that's using Jetset. And, this, and similar to this, we also have did will set. And that is an observer that will be called when a, bef just before this is purchased property is newly assigned. So similar to Jetset, it's called upon new assignment of this property, but will set will be called before actually assign, assigning the new value, but did set will be called after assigning the new value. So here you can just print saying is purchased is changed from and here old is purchased represents the old value because the value of is purchased is not being set yet. So it's the older value and then we can say two and to denote the new value in the will set observer we use a constant called new value that's passed to this will set observer so now whenever we assign this is purchased variable this will set will be called just before assignment and we can we will print out its older and newer value so let's try that now if we try to change its value by clicking on it you can see the will set uh, print statement is triggered saying is purchased is changed from true to false and also when, when the assignment is complete, did set is triggered and it prints the old value 
is true. That is correct. So that this is how will did set and will set work, and how you can benefit from uh, these two observers to simplify your logic. I hope you guys liked this video, and if you liked it, please hit the like button. You can comment down below to let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer all of them. And if you're new here, uh, please subscribe to keep getting quality content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.